first thing I think is, well, thank God, I don't, I used to think, thank God Ethan Edelman has to fight that, and I don't have to tell people that relationships can be addictive, uh, you can get over addiction without abstaining. Now I don't have to tell them that it's stupid to have a whole set of drugs as being illegal. Eating can do that, but damn it, he's sort of making that work more or less. However, I mean, uh, here's one little anecdote. Uh, Ethan has this fantasy that leading figures in the recovery field, people who've gone through the 12 steps, are going to back him up about legalizing marijuana. They're not. The 12-step industry and mentality fundamentally opposes legalization. The examples being Patrick Kennedy, Ted Kennedy's son, um, William Cope Moyers, Bill Moyers' son, who are both engaged in the recovery industry and whose job it is to warn people that, oh, people become addicted to substances. There's one of two reasons for that. They really don't have an answer to this, either because the substances themselves make people addicted or because some people are born to be addicted. They, they mix and match those two theories all the time. Because it's sort of hard, you know, most people say, well, heroin makes everybody addicted. Marijuana, I don't know. Well, alcohol, that can't be true. So it must be that some people are born to be addicted to alcohol because obviously some people just don't go that route. Uh, in fact, I'm the only one who maintains a model that applies equally to all of them, that uh, addictogenesis is a learned response to the environment and to specific substances. And so, Ironically, what we're finding is that a group of people who used to consider themselves the most advanced public health people, here, let's recognize addiction as a disease and help people, are now going to be the rear guard uh, action, dragging their heels, fighting every inch of the way against liberalization of drug laws. And it gets down fundamentally, geez, I didn't deal well with those drugs. We should ban them for everybody. I mean, that's basically the kind of logic that they're applying. But Society-wide, the 12-step model is so pervasive, it's an interesting civil war. I don't know the answer to that one. Obviously, states are legalizing marijuana. There's some impulse to do that, and younger people are more impelled to do that. On the other hand, you have a giant recovery industry, which argues the other thing, the opposite way. That, I'm writing a book, as I said, called Recover, with an exclamation point, and I like to put side by side opposing means in society. In America, we have a whole group of people that has this kind of powerful consciousness movement, mind over matter. If you get a positive outlook in life, you'll control your existence, A. Then we have the disease model, which says there's certain experiences no human being can manage. You're a love addict, you're a gambling addict, boom, you're that way for life. And many people believe both those things. They don't really fit in the same basket. And what I'm trying to do in that book, as I said, I'm writing it with Elsa Thompson, is to say, you can't believe both these things. They just don't fit together. One of them happens to work better than the other. Let me explain how they contradict one another and, and how feeling your efficacy and garnering your strength to deal with addictions is the only, the best, and the single way to overcome addiction.